Hey everybody! In this lesson, we are going to look at the starting point of a process hazard analysis, or PHA. And it begins with a simple question Is the risk acceptable? A typical issue in a PHA is that people do not have a common understanding of risk acceptance. This creates endless discussions which do not result in clear actions. Let's take a look at what happens when a team lacks shared understanding in a PHA. Have you been in a meeting like this? Okay, let's get started. Does anyone see any hazards in this process? I know all the hazards. I have been operating this kind of process for 25 years. Well, what if an operator makes an error? We have very reliable people. I don't see this as a risk. Okay, what if the pressure control loop fails? I don't think anything would happen. We have a mechanical safeguard. Okay. Good enough then. I only have a few hours left. I need to go back to the plant. There is a turnaround in two weeks. Well, I've seen operators switching the wrong valves before. We have a procedure in place. Let's move on. By the end of the day, people are still talking, but there are no commitments to actions, and the process hazard analysis is only half done. Everyone leaves the meeting thinking that this was a waste of time. You know the outcome of a PHA is bad when no one is confident in the design. Why does this happen? It is not because there are no reasonable people in the room, or people are not smart. This happens when people don't apply the right decision tools. Most organizations know that accidents are not a necessary cost of doing business. However, a proper understanding of the real cause of accidents is critical to the effective control of loss. A process hazard analysis, or PHA, is fundamentally a loss causation and consequence model. This helps a company understand what must be done to control the risk. When you attend a PHA, the team must first identify loss exposure and then evaluate the level of risk associated with each exposure before deciding on the appropriate control actions to be taken. The goal of any loss control program is not to overprotect the facility to the point where the asset becomes inoperable, but also not to underprotect, resulting in excessive risk exposure. Let's think about how to strike the right balance. A facility does not need to be as safe as working in a high rise office. On the other hand, it should not be as dangerous as Alaska king crab fishing, the highest risk occupation in North America. The starting point for any good decisions coming from a PHA should be a shared understanding of the objectives. When designing a complex facility to operate safely yet productively, there needs to be a decision framework that everyone understands, one that facilitates discussion and encourages high quality decisions. The challenge is that the framework must be simple intuitively understandable, and can be applied consistently while not oversimplifying. Imagine if your team worked like a well-oiled machine. A PHA would be so much more efficient and enjoyable. PHA offers the approach that allows a team of participants to systematically think through the design, exhaustively identify and clearly assess the risk. A well-executed PHA is like a shared language that allows a team to make decisions based on shared knowledge. Let's see what a functioning PHA looks like with the facilitator guiding the team to make high quality decisions. Okay, let's start off by looking at a no-flow abnormal process condition at the separator. What could cause no flow here? There's a pressure control valve at the outlet of the vessel, which could inadvertently close. If it closed, I don't think anything catastrophic would happen. We have a PSV on the vessel. True but it is possible for the PSV to fail. We can take some credit for it, but this does not eliminate the risk. If so, what would be the worst credible consequence? We have seen some pretty high inlet pressures in the past, so the separator could overpressure. There is also an automated high pressure shutdown at the inlet. Okay, so we have two safeguards, a PSV and an automatic shutdown. Both can reduce the risk, Let's use the risk matrix to guide the risk acceptance. It looks like the risk is acceptable based on the risk matrix. Okay, that seems reasonable. My guys can operate this.
With a facilitator guiding the team, the conversation is focused and new perspectives are explored. A key outcome of a PHA is the documentation of the logical decisions. It shows due diligence was applied to the design through a systematic approach. The risks were clearly understood and managed by the identification, evaluation, and control of abnormal process conditions.